Hey everyone, and welcome back. So today we're going to finally do our Sonic the Hedgehog display piece project using perler beads. So over the last couple of months, I've been posting different pictures of the projects I've been doing. I'll show a few of them on the screen right now so you can get an idea of where we're going if you haven't seen any of them on the channel. So today we're going to basically be adding Sonic the Hedgehog to the collection. And by the way, there was a vote on the channel and almost a third of all the votes actually went to Sonic the Hedgehog, which is why that's the one we're doing today. Now, just before we jump into the details, I do want to mention, don't forget to hit the like button on this video if you do like it, because if I get a very good percentage of likes, well, we might do this on a more regular basis. However, I am guaranteeing we're at least going to do a second one because Donkey Kong came very close to getting another quarter of the votes and a lot of channel supporters actually pointed out that that was the one that they voted for. So as a second project, I am guaranteeing we're at least going to be doing that one as well. Now, before we actually get to the project itself, I will be giving a quick explanation of how I get the source material for doing these different projects. If you're not interested in that, look at the timestamps down below. You can jump straight to the project itself. So over the projects I've done, I found multiple ways to get your source material. We're going to go over the three main ways I do it. We're going to start with the two ways we're not going to be using for today. And then I'll finally explain exactly what we're going to be doing for today's project. Now, the first method is probably the easiest one. And if you're just getting started out, it is a perfect way for like a first project. However, it has to be a popular character. But basically, all you have to do is type the name of the character with perler beads after it. And you can actually look at previous projects of other people and copy what they've been doing. Now, personally, I will mention, however, I've stopped using this method whenever possible because since you're basing it off of someone else's work, you don't know how close they got to the original sprite, and i rather just interpret it from myself from one of the original images. But still, for someone just starting out or wants an easier time, this is a perfect method. However, I will mention as well, as I said earlier, it is limited to popular characters because if you try to find projects for really out there characters like the ones I did from Tanuki Justice, it was pretty much impossible to find. Now, the second way that we're going to take a look at is when you're dealing with a character that is fairly less popular on the internet, like when I did Tanuki Justice. It's not that people don't love the game, but they're not as crazy about it, or at least there aren't as many people crazy about it as there are like Sonic and Mario. And basically what I did is I took a screen capture in game of the sprite. I took actually a few, but I tried to find one where basically the background was isolating the colors pretty well. And then all you have to do if you want to go really low tech is zoom in on the sprite as close as you can like this and then basically try to copy the sprite down to a pixel program if you're starting out. And if you think you can do it by eye directly to the perler beads, you can do that as well. In the beginning, I was using pixel programs to make the map first, something like Pixlr, which I'll link down below in the description of the video. But as I went forward with it, I really started skipping that step because I didn't need to do it anymore. And by the way, if you have the programs and you have the knowledge, you can also easily use something like Photoshop to get a much clearer image than what we're looking at here by simply zooming in. But once again, we're not going to go through those steps here. That's getting a little bit too detailed in the process. Now, the last method and the one we're going to be using today is sort of in between both of those previous methods. Once again, it is pretty much reserved to when you're doing a more popular character. But basically, you search for the sprite itself and you hope that someone has done the work of creating a PNG from the actual original sprite. And luckily, since today we're doing Sonic the Hedgehog, well, there are tons of sprites available of pretty much every version of Sonic. And today I finally settled on doing basically Sonic 3. OK, so we're going to be doing the original sprite from Sonic 3, the one you can see here on the screen. By the way, I was strongly debating which whether we would use the sprite from Sonic Mania since it's the one that's available on the Switch. And I'll explain to you why I decided not to do the Sonic Mania one. It's that once I started detailing the sprite itself, it's using six different shades of blue, three different shades of gray, three different shades of red, which are very, very difficult to find exact comparisons in perler beads, basically. So at six different shades, yes, I do have six different shades of blue, but some of them would have looked off compared to the original sprite. 
So I pretty much went instead with the second best option, which is the model from Sonic 3, which is the most advanced of the retro sprites from the Genesis era. There are still at least three different shades of blue. There are at least a couple of shades of gray, but they're much easier to match with the actual Perler Beat colors I have. Now, personally, this is my preferred method out of the three when it's available to you. One, it's a lot quicker. Number two, the image often you can get a lot clearer. And lastly, you are still staying 100% original to the source material, so to the original sprite, because it's basically an exact PNG image of that sprite. So this is the exact one we're going to be reproducing today in pixel art form. Now, the one last thing I want to go over before we actually jump straight into the project is what I'm actually using. Now, if you're starting out, once again, what I strongly recommend is going on something like Amazon and picking up one of these kits with multiple, multiple colors in them, because especially if you don't know exactly what projects you'll be doing at the start, you just want to give it a try for a couple of different characters. This is an excellent option. Uh, I'll put a link down below to the exact kit I used when I started out, and I still buy them today when I want a huge variety of colors. Now, by the way, if you're wondering why these are see-through, it's because we're using the green screen, so obviously the greens aren't showing up. The only thing I do want to specify, however, as you're doing bigger and bigger projects and you're sort of centering more around the exact projects you want to do, at some point, however, it does start getting better to get individual bags of the exact colors that you're using more of. So right now, I'm sort of in a mixed period where I do both. I buy the huge kits when I'm not exactly sure what my next project's going to be. But when I have a very specific project that uses a lot of a couple of colors, well, I go and picks up the individual bags. So now with all that stuff out of the way, and as I said, I'll be leaving links down below. We're going to jump straight into setting up the project. Now, I won't be talking over that section. I'll put a little bit of music in the background. We'll do it in fast forward and you'll get to see how I exactly set up the grid pattern to make the uh, Sonic Sprite.
So here we have it, our Sonic the Hedgehog is now done. And you know what? I think it's looking very good from both sides. I really like how the base came out as well. Overall, I think it does give that Green Hill Zone vibe. And overall, I only had to make one tiny modification on the design compared to the original sprite, and that is around the eyes, the hands, and the legs, there was actually a third shade of gray that is sort of in between the lighter gray and the white. And basically what I did is at those points, I alternated between the white and the lighter gray, whichever, in my opinion, fit best. But honestly, overall, I still think it came out excellently. And unless you have the actual sprite side by side, it's very hard to tell those tiny points apart. And now just in case you didn't get it from the process, the way I connect the base to the figure, it's simple. I do a little extension under the base of the figure at different anchor points. And then I make basically the space in the bases to fit it through. So here you have basically the figure that is coming through both layers of the base. Now, one important thing I would have changed about this figure if I had to do it again, is rather than make one very large anchor point here, I would have made two anchor points with a little separation in the middle. Why? Because overall, if I compare it to other figures of the same size, this one does have a little bit of wobble in it. It's not gonna fall out. There's just a little bit of wobble in it whenever you move it around, while the figures that have two separate points don't have that wobble in it. So if I had to redo it, that's the one tiny modification I would do. Now it's all up to you. Let me know what do you think about our Sonic the Hedgehog? Do you like how it came out? And also at the same time, leave me down below in the comments if you have any other figures that are really top on your list that you would like to see me do in a future video. Like I said, the next one will already be Donkey Kong, but I need some ideas for figures for after that. I know I have Samus going around there that I really would want to do soon, but I want a few other fresh ideas. So leave them down below in the comments. And as I said earlier, don't forget to hit that like button. It's the best way to let me know that you're liking this type of video and you want to see more of it. And at the same time, if you're not subscribed to the channel yet, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and the notification so you know when all my future content comes out. So as usual, thank you so much for watching and I hope I'll see you in my next video.